Today, we're going to go through an exercise for refactoring some codes so that we can take advantage of composition. So you might be asking yourself, why do we even care about doing this, right? So you might have heard about composition or seen the word kind of come up when you're looking at object-oriented programming. Today's exercise will show you why that's valuable and some easy steps that you can take to refactor code so that you can take advantage of this. This is a strategy that I use all the time in not only my hobby programming, but also in all of the professional code that I write when I need to refactor some messy code and try to break it into smaller pieces for composition. All right, I know you're eager, so let's go hop over to Visual Studio and get started. So I put together a really simple program for us to walk through today that demonstrates that we have a little bit too much going on in a particular method and why taking advantage of composition is going to help us out here. Now, I wrote this comment here and I just want to say it out loud, but I don't want you to focus too much on the very specifics of what's going on in the code we're going to walk through. A lot of this is a little bit contrived and it's just so that I can demonstrate some different functionality and then we can walk through this example to pull the code apart. So don't really focus on the fact that we're going to be saving out URLs to a file here. We're really just focused on the techniques that we can use. All right, I'll just spend a couple of seconds walking us through what this method does. So at the beginning, you'll see that I'm just doing some sanity checks on the inputs that are passed into this method. And I tried to document each little section here with a comment that just says functionality, because I want us to be able to come back to each of these. The next part, and this again is just a contrived kind of thing that I wanted to add, but we're going to pretend that our system is only able to download from HTTPS URLs, and it will actually try to help out the caller by putting HTTPS in front of the URL provided if it's not already there. Would I normally suggest doing this? Not at all, but this is something that we're just going to try and extract so that we can work through trying to refactor for composition. The next part here is pretty simple. We're just gonna go download the HTML content from the URL. Afterwards, we're going to look at just using a regular expression to pull apart the URLs that we see inside the HTML. And you'll notice that I left a comment here saying, is this regular expression actually sufficient for looking for these hrefs inside of the HTML? Well, right now we don't know the answer to this unless you're really good with regular expressions and familiar with parsing. But if you stay right to the end of this video, I have a follow-up on how we can actually explore how we can do unit testing to make sure that this stuff works. The last couple of sections are pretty straightforward in here. We're just going to build the output that we're going to put into the file. And finally, the last section is just writing that content out to a file. So that's going to be the method and the class that we're going to pull apart and trying to use composition to make this a little bit cleaner for us to work with. I'm gonna go make a new project in Visual Studio so we'll still have all the original code and you'll be able to check this out on GitHub afterwards. This way you'll have both the original project and the refactored one and you can compare and contrast them on your own time. So I've gone ahead and created a second project here so that we can work through this refactoring exercise. I've introduced a bit of a shortcut for us here and that's that I've actually gone through the code already, like I mentioned, and put these little comments that say functionality on them. For your own code, if you're looking at methods that are something like this where there is a lot going on, I'm just gonna zoom out you can see that it's almost a hundred lines of code doing a whole bunch of different things. This is something that I would recommend for you to go do. Essentially, walk through the code looking at what different sections of that code do and see if you can group each section into different types of functionality. And coming back to why we want to do this, well, when we're thinking about composition, Composition is going to allow us to have smaller, more purpose-built classes so that we can go compose something that's a little bit more complex. This allows us to isolate individual parts of the code and help focus on more of a single responsibility principle. If you're not familiar with the single responsibility principle, it suggests that a class should only have one reason to change. And the way that you can interpret this is that, as the name suggests, it should only have one responsibility. If we look at this particular method, Method, we can see that there is so much going on and in fact it is nowhere near single responsibility principle guidelines. So this is really important when it comes to being able to refactor code and have things isolated so that you know things aren't just breaking across the board. And like I mentioned if you stay to the end this is actually going to really help us with testing so I have another video that you can watch right after this. So the first step that I recommend you do is go through your code trying to document the individual pieces of functionality. You don't necessarily have 
have to go write comments like I've done. And in fact, I wouldn't go add these kind of comments and then commit them or something like that. But the exercise itself is really about documenting the different sections. So instead of walking through all this code again, because I've just done that with you, you can just keep in mind that I've gone ahead and grouped the individual pieces of functionality. So what's the next step that we're going to want to do to refactor so that we can get closer to a composition pattern? Well, we actually want to extract the functionality that we have here into different methods. So if you're using Visual Studio like I am, you can actually select this code, right click on it, go to quick actions and refactorings. I realize the text is quite small, but it's generally the top context menu item. And when that pops up, there should be an option saying extract method. You can go ahead and click that and it will go extract that and you can give it a name. For this example, I've just called the first piece of functionality normalize URL. Something to keep in mind as well is that that context menu does not always work depending on the type of code that you have, but you can of course do this work manually by trying to literally cut the code out, paste it into a new method, and then massage the actual parameters that you need to pass into that method so that it works. What I'm going to do from here is actually repeat this process for the other pieces of functionality that we have in this class. So to save some time, I've edited the video and actually have done this refactoring for us. And if I scroll down, you can see that I have all of the methods that I extracted using the same approach that I just illustrated. And I've used the extract refactor tool to actually pull these methods out into the class. So if I zoom out a little bit on the original method that we have, it's now been reduced greatly to actually just have several of these method calls that do individual jobs for us. At this point, though, we're still not taking advantage of composition, so we have one more step to go do for each of these methods. Recall that composition is actually making smaller objects and then passing those into larger objects to compose the more complex objects. That means that we're going to have new classes for these pieces. Just a side note that if you're following this type of approach, you might find that over time you create tons of individual small classes. So I just want to pause to say that as you're doing this kind of thing, you may want to consider that you have classes that do similar types of functionality, and it might make sense to merge them together. So for example, if you had a bunch of stuff that was helping to parse and format HTML, perhaps you might group that into its own class instead of having 10 classes that go do something very similar. For this particular example, I'm actually going to make one class for each of the methods that we extracted. I'll do that refactoring and edit the video so that you can see the result. All right, I've gone ahead and actually taken the methods out of this class. You'll see that Visual Studio is now complaining because these methods don't exist in this class anymore. If I scroll down, you'll see that I have these individual classes added here, and these are just the methods that were in the original class that we pulled out and now added into individual classes below. I'd actually argue that the hardest part about this whole thing is actually coming up with good names for things. So once you get in the habit of actually following this pattern, you still might get totally stumped coming up with names. I'll scroll down just a little bit more so that you can see the other classes, but these are all of the pieces that we had in the original method just pulled out into individual classes. All right, let's look at the last step that we have to do to actually take advantage of composition. So now that we have all of our smaller building blocks, we actually have to leverage them inside of our class. What we can do is actually create a constructor for this class, awesome URL saver, and then pass in all of the pieces that we need. So these are the five classes that our awesome URL saver class needs to be composed of. We can now use some of the refactoring shortcuts in Visual Studio to easily add fields for each one of these and have them assigned in the constructor. A side note is that if I would have declared them as fields originally, I could have just made a constructor right at the beginning. Okay, now that we have access to all five of these different pieces that our awesome URL saver class needs, we just have to make sure that we're calling them properly. 
So if we go to each of the methods that no longer exists inside of this class, we can just call the corresponding class that now has the functionality we need. All right, so I've gone ahead and added each of the instances that we need to call, and I've done a little bit of formatting just to try and keep it all a little bit more aligned so that it might be easier for you to read instead of scrolling across my entire screen here. You can see that there's now no more errors left inside of this method, and if I check the error list, there's only one more spot for us to go fix up. And that's actually when we go create this object right at the top of our program. When we go to compose things, we now have to provide instances of all of the things that our object requires. Let's go ahead and instantiate all of the required dependencies for our awesome URL saver. At this point, we've actually completed doing the refactoring so that we can take advantage of composition. Let's go ahead and run our program to see if it works. All right, it finished very quickly. I don't see any exceptions here, but we have to go check the output. When I open the output file, I can see that I definitely have some URLs that were pulled from my blog. All right, so that's a really simple process that you can follow and repeat on almost any piece of code to try breaking out pieces of functionality into separate classes so that you can take advantage of composition. The first step that we looked at was actually going through the individual method pieces and looking at the separate pieces of functionality that you might want to call out. From there, we actually extract those methods and you can skip and combine these steps because you can actually take that method and put it right into a new class right away. Or you can go kind of pull those out manually first, try and organize them and maybe group them into some smaller classes together. From there, we actually have to go pass in those new dependencies into our class. So this is actually the composition part. We're gonna compose this object now. And then we update our original method to call the new dependencies with the methods that we extracted. The result of this is that we have smaller classes that we can work with that are actually more purpose built. The next step that we're going to look at is actually being able to test this code. And if you watch this video, right here, you're going to see that this makes it a lot easier for us to work with.